Well, good evening and welcome back. Um, I did say I'd probably see you after Christmas, however, there has been a bit of a change in my quad circumstances. Uh, and that is, I now have myself uh, DJI Phantom 3 Advanced. It was an easy choice, a friend of mine made me a, a really good offer and I uh, decided that uh, I couldn't say no um, to the uh, to the offer. So, um, on with it, what it is, uh, I'm doing a video on this, the DJI Go app. Uh, for those on the Phantom 2 Vision, Phantom 2 Vision Plus, um, this is a whole different thing. And it's took me a while to find a way around it and learn how to do things with it, so I thought I'd do a quick guide. This version is for iOS. Uh, I will do another video on the Android version because there are some slightly uh, slight differences uh, in the layout and the form of it all. So obviously first thing you have to do, plug your controller into your tablet. Uh, in my case this is my iPad. And there we go, oh, that's my kitchen uh, as seen from my Phantom. So the first thing you get is this overall status page, flight mode, compass, IMU. Uh, it shows you remote control, the battery level, radio channel quality. Um, I'm getting some interference when I'm in the house here. Uh, and the other thing is to format your SD, your SD card, uh, that's down here. Um, I was um, Google searching for that uh, out in the field uh, today. So that says that page, uh, that is accessible by touching the ready to go GPS sign there, you can bring that back anytime by tapping that. And then obviously just hit the cross there to exit out. Tapping the DJI logo goes past the main screen. Here you've got uh, your equipment listing, you can got the uh, editor box where you can edit your videos you've done. Uh, Sky Pixel, uh, all about me, etc. Uh, this one up here is that she signed into the app. Tap the corner. Uh, so yeah, that's, there's not really much. The little hat here in the corner, let's just tap that, see what that's got for me. That's the Academy. Oh, there's a flight simulator. A tutorial for beginners, flight tutorials and user manuals. Let's have a quick look at the flight simulator. Right, okay. Now, um, there we go, we, uh, there we go, right, okay. So I'm assuming, simulator ready, start motors now. Point has been updated, take off. There we go, right, so the motors are started, so I should now be able to take off. There we go, ooh, and I can move sideways. Um, okay, a little bit jerky uh, on the the display, on the, what you can see, I'm actually on a screen mirroring system. Uh, but you can see, basically the whole thing uh, just looks like you were flying. There's your home point here, which way the quad's facing, etc, uh, etc. Et if we tap Return to home, return to home and auto land, aircraft nose and direction, that's rather neat, just slide that across. Let's see, tap to cancel return to home. And as you can see this quad, this quad is now rising up. This is fun to play with, uh, when I can't get out to fly, I can fly with the uh, this simulator app. Of course, it just shows you all the basic settings you would normally find when you're using the DJI Go Up. Your battery levels up there, your um, transmission strength for your first person view, your transmitter strength for your controller, uh, satellites, and it's return to home, cruising, and it says go to the home point. And you can tap to cancel the landing. Uh, it's now coming down slowly. So let's just tap to cancel the landing. Yes. And we'll just pull down the stick and we'll see what happens. There you go, it's coming down to land. And all the way down. There we go, I'm going to hit the ground a little bit hard. I'm going to land on the grass, I think. There we go, I've landed and motors have stopped. Hey, that's rather cool, that. Okay, restart that. So let's now tap on the top corner again. And it just says uh, exit flight simulator. Restart your aircraft to unlock the motors. Right, okay, so the motors are locked, they won't start, they won't let's in that. So, uh, let's go back to camera mode. So click on the big blue button that says camera. And you can see there, back to my, uh, back to my kitchen area again. So at the moment it's in POT, which is using the VPS. Uh, up here is your satellites, uh, as I said, your transmitters and so on. The main menu button is this three dots. If you tap that, you get a drop down list. First one is main controller settings, uh, home point settings, multiple flight modes, P and, P, A and F, 
uh, return to home altitude in meters even though I've got this set to show feet it still shows things like the the RTH altitude in meters uh, beginner mode if you want to have beginner mode set flight max flight altitude enable max distance and then in the advanced setting down here you've got your expo sensitivity gain I'll click each one in turn so you can see what it brings up uh, um, this is for changing how the stick reacts to movements in and out and you've got your throttle up rudder right forward right uh, if we tap on sensitivity uh, altitude break and your end point again I don't know what they all mean it's all a case of having to play with them I just thought I'd take you through uh, gain uh, pitch roll your vertical I really wouldn't mess around too much with gains uh, unless you know what you're doing tap sensors and it tells you your oh there you go uh, pretty much what you saw in your Phantom 2 Vision uh, tools tab and you can check the IMU or you can run the IMU calibration from here uh, what next um, Remote control signal lost. Uh, if you tap that, you've got various options. You can return to home, uh, you can land or you can hover until you regain uh, control signal. Uh, doesn't take effect if you are obviously in a, a waypoint mission. Smart return to home. Um, I'm not sure exactly what that means either. But enable VPS, you can turn the VPS unit off if you want to. And this part I do like, turn on or off front LEDs, the, the bright red lights that sometimes at night time um, sort of ruin the shots that you've done um, what else is in there so that's advanced settings so let's now tap on the little controller box here and in there you've got your stick mode settings and how to link your remote controller and you can also set the two buttons on the back uh, various options see one you can have advanced camera settings camera forward down gimbal follow toggle map live view battery info not defined and the same for C2 so that's all that's in there so let's now tap on the HD button. HD shows you uh, your channel for your light bridge. Now, if you're in England, you can only have auto. You can't choose custom. However, if you are gonna change your region on your tablet to the United States, then you can choose uh, whichever channel has the best. Uh, no red lines, uh, most stable one, uh, looking like um, 16, 7, 15, 16, 17. Uh, so if we change that to let's say 15, and then now 15 is in use now. So that's how you change that. And transmission quality that is for your light bridge. You can go all the way up to a big 10 megabits per second, but of course that will slow down uh, live feed if your tablet or your device isn't really up to it or not. Uh, next one is this one, and this shows your battery levels. Uh, each cell individually, uh, voltage and temperature, the amount of times it's been charged, remaining power and total capacity, and of course you can then set your critically low battery warning. So my first one is 30%, and then critically low is 10%. Uh, flight time is something I've done today, I've been having to play with it. Tap in advanced settings, show voltage on main screen, uh, time to discharge, because obviously the P3 batteries do discharge themselves. Tap on details, and we just get this current status normal no idea what that means so what we'll do now is we'll tap on this little icon and in there we've got uh, gimbal mode follow and you also have fpv if you are a phantom 2 vision plus owner you'll know you can fix the gimbal to get true fpv or follow basically means the gimbal will stabilize itself and the camera will always remain level I'll follow for that uh, advanced settings if you tap advanced settings we have uh, gimbal speed, uh, how quickly it turns up and down. I've got mine quite slow, I like a nice slow uh, tilt down. Uh, you can tilt the, the gimbal upwards as well, something you couldn't do on the Phantom 2 Vision Plus unless you change the settings on it. Uh, gimbal pitch buffer, again no idea. Enable synchronize, gimbal pan follow. If you want to know what all these terms mean, just do a Google search. I'm just going to take you through what, the, what, uh, what each tab has on it. Sensing camera, adjust gimbal roll and a, a gimbal also calibration again pretty much self-explanatory what they are last one of these three dots and that puts me back to the general settings on here where you can change whether you want imperial or metric uh, camera uh, enable hardware decoding live streaming uh, if you tap on select live broadcast platform you can live stream with Facebook, Weibo, YouTube or custom I've seen a few people do live stream, it does work quite well, but you do need a decent 4G signal. 
Uh, show flight route, that shows you a little icon down the bottom which you saw in the, the train wrap before. Um, cash map in the background, uh, do you need to? Uh, I like this idea, uh, geo system. When the geo system is enabled, you can use the latest information on flight restrictions to ensure your flight does not violate regulations. I would imagine you would need a 4G, 3G um, you know, data plan uh, for your tablet, your phone, whichever you're using. My iPad doesn't have a SIM card, it has no access to Wi Fi when I'm out in the field. Uh, video cache, cache during video shooting, uh, largest video cache capacity, 2 gigabyte. Uh, available space. I'm assuming it caches it to the card on the, on the quad. Uh, clear cache automatically. Uh, the oldest cache files will be cleared. It will turn that on actually because it might help for some things. Uh, the oldest files, it just repeats basically what's on there. Um, flight logs. Uh, tapping flight logs uh, gives you the logs that you've flown. I've, these are some that I've, I've flown uh, this morning, and then these are uh, when I started the motors and played with the flight simulator earlier. Uh, and last but not least, you have a uh, device name, and uh, mine is called Quadzuki, and the reason it's called Quadzuki is because my other one was Quadrilla. So you've got Quadrilla and Quadzuki. If you don't get that, go and Google search 80s television programs for UK kids, and you'll find Godzilla and Quadzuki. Don't blame me for that, that was my darling wife who decided to call me that. Right, okay, so there are also now two settings for the camera. This button up here, if we tap that, switches between camera and video camera. At the moment now, I'm in uh, normal camera mode. So if I tap this button down below it, you get a pop-up box where you can make changes to the camera. Things like ISO, shutter speed, etc. Click little camera up here and you get photo, image size, image format, white balance style and colour and click little cog at the end and you get histogram, that's that little box down here um, I'm still learning something about keeping the peak in the middle gives the best light overexposure warning, video caption uh, you can put a grid on, center points, anti-flicker, file index mode and you can also format the SD card from here as well which I didn't know about format SD card, ok or cancel, I don't want to format at the moment, thank you very much to get out that one, just simply click these buttons again and then they should go away Now. If you click that button again and change into video mode, and then we click this button again down here, you'll see now there's a different set of options. You now have video size. If you tap that, it shows you that we have 2.7K or 2K as it's known, 2704 by 1520, and then all the options underneath for. Uh, 1920 by 1080 and if you scroll down a bit 1280 by 720 uh, I've shot video in 2k and um, nothing to play it on so for me I'll be sticking with the uh, 1920 by 1080 24 frames I might get adventures and try the 4 shape and 50 frames so that's video size video format you can either have mp4 or you can have MOV depending on which one you want to use MOV is most popular with uh, Mac users of course. Uh, video uh, format PAL or NTSC. If you're in England it's going to be PAL. If you're in America or the way it's going to be NTSC. White balance, auto white balance, style. Tapping the style button gives you things like standard landscape soft. Again I'm not going to go through all those. You're quite welcome to have a play with those. And colour at the bottom gives you uh, cine like, D log. And you can see if I change the various options, the background, uh, the, the live feed also changed, I can go black and white, uh, go to vivid, beach, uh, dream, classic and you go, so we'll have none, thank you very much, and then come out of that simply just, oh sorry, last one, so I click the icon there, and you got uh, overexposure warning video caption grid, and that one uh, gives you the balance for your video camera, pretty much the same as the normal camera. So that there, so remember if you want to change the settings for video you have to make sure you click this button and show the video camera but if you want to change it to picture then you'll get a different set of options. Now, that fooled me at first um, until I realised that you need to change from one to the other uh, or you get image size, image format which obviously is for, for photos. 
and you can set single shot HDR multiple AEB and time shot in the photo set as well so it's, it is quite a lot more choice uh, for uh, the Phantom 3 uh, Advanced Pro uh, probably standard as well shortcut by the way if you just tap any of the icons at the top it will open up the corresponding screen uh, for the list and uh, Last bit, not least, uh, the shutter speed, etc. Again, unless you're a professional photographer, I would leave that uh, automatic, um, unless you know what you're doing with it. That button there, tap the screen, ensure you need to save that's automatic takeoff, and just slide this across, and it'll hover at four feet. We don't want to take off. And this one, obviously, as you know, is return to home. Tap in that. Oop, doesn't work when you're uh, when it's landed, it won't return to home because it's not flying. As usual, you've got your map down here. Uh, your visual positioning system will tell you how high off the ground you are according to VPS, uh, distance and height as well. That basically is you navigating around uh, the DJI Go app for the Phantom 3 range of quads. Uh, if there's anything I've missed, um, I mean, oh, the other thing is, you can move this histogram, by the way. You can drag it around. You can stick it sort of anywhere you want on the screen. Um, and you can also, I believe move no nope, you can't move the the map you can shrink the map down but you can't move the box for it that box uh, will appear over this side uh, on the iOS uh, the Android version uh, but again if you if you want to watch the Android video that's going to be coming next so um, I now got to go and fly uh, my Phantom 3 Advanced and learn lots of things about it because there is so much to uh, to learn I've actually read a manual for the first time. Yes, a bloke reading a manual is not something you uh, would expect to, to hear being admitted. Oh, put my screen recorder out of the way. So that's it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was informative for you. Um, when uh, I get more of a time, I'll go into uh, waypoints and waypoint settings because I haven't covered those in this. This was literally just to show you how you would uh, how you'd navigate around the various menus. So, Litchi version of, not Litchi version, the Android version of the DJI Go app and then I'm also going to be covering Litchi for iOS and Litchi for Android uh, for the Phantom 3 and again it's going to be a basic walkthrough. So until next time, uh, as always, safe flying, take care.